So the Internet Archive is being sued by the music industry. First it was the publishing industry, book publishing. Now it's the music industry. UMG, Capital, Concord, CMGI, Sony, and Arista are suing the Internet Archive, Brewster, Kale, uh, the Kale Austin Foundation, and George Blood and his limited partnership, I guess it is. Plaintiffs bring this suit to address defendants' massive ongoing violation of plaintiffs' rights in protected pre-1972 sound recordings. As part of what defendants have dubbed the Great 78 Project, the Internet Archive, etc., have willfully reproduced thousands of plaintiffs' sound recordings without authorization by copying physical records into digital files. This is physical vinyl records. Internet Archive then willfully uploaded, distributed, digitally transmitted those illegally copied recordings millions of times. Kale, etc. have knowingly and materially contributed. Defendants attempt to defend their wholesale theft of generations of music under the guise of preservation and research, but this is smokescreen. Their activities far exceed those limited purposes. Internet Archive unabashedly seeks to provide free and unlimited access to music for everyone, regardless of copyright. Defendant Kale has admitted Internet Archive's stated ambition is to poison the whole web with our 78s from a, from a May 11th, 2017 uh, YouTube video. In truth, defendants' malfeasance springs from their disregard for copyright law and the rights of artists and content owners. Internet Archive and other defendants have a long history of opposing copyright law, etc. In reality, defendants are nothing more than mass infringers. Defendants cannot justify their activities as necessary to preserve historical recordings. All of the pre-1972 sound recordings listed on Exhibit A, which is, small, which is only a small sample, are already available for streaming or downloading from numerous services authorized by plaintiffs. These recordings face no danger of being lost, forgotten, or destroyed. Okay, so starting to skip ahead a little bit. Congress enacted the Music Modernization Act in 2018, the ORNG Hatch Bob Goodlatte Music Modernization Act. The act provides that for sound recordings fixed prior to February 15, 1972, anyone who violates any of the exclusive rights, the basic copyrights, reproduction, distribution, performance, etc., is subject to an action for infringement pursuant to 17 U.S.C., 1401. Now here is a here is a section of copyright law that I am not familiar with. Let's take a look at it together. So here you have the Music Modernization Act section 1401 unauthorized use of pre-1972 sound recordings. Anyone who on or before the last day of the applicable transition period and without the consent of the rights owner engages in covered activity with respect to a sound recording before that date, shall be subject to the remedies of 502 through 505, the same as an infringer of copyright, etc. And so it looks like there is a transition period, three years, uh, five years, 15 years, and if you've passed that transition period and there's still infringement, it looks like you get to sue for statutory damages, basically. Internet Archive's Great 78 Project refers to 78 RPM records, which are phonographic records designed to be played at a speed of 78 revolutions per minute. Plaintiffs issued hundreds of thousands of sound recordings from the 1900s to the 1950s. The Great 78 Project is at great78.archive.org. It is a massive, unauthorized digital record store of recordings. I don't know what they mean they're storing or they are selling. I guess they're going to get to that. To lure customers into this illegal record store, Internet Archive regularly posts advertisements on social media with links to newly added recordings. I think they have one of them down here. Yeah, so here's the Internet Archive's entry for White Christmas, according to the plaintiff's complaint. And it looks like you can play it. And that's distribution. And probably copying. Well, it has to be copying, I think. They were attempting to collect and digitize over 400,000 recordings and make them publicly available. And where I'm going to start skipping is here, because there's a lot. It seems like this is pretty blatant, kind of like the book publishing thing, where the Internet Archive was archiving books and then making them available to the public on their website via some kind of software or something because that was going to be the next 
big thing during the pandemic. But of course, copyright law wasn't modernized for the pandemic. And this is just copyright infringement. So if there really are 400,000 works, Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra, Louis Armstrong, Thelonious Monk, etc., that's a death knell for the Internet Archive. I, you know, they're either going to have to shut down or someone's going to have to pay off the music industry and the publishing industry, or there's going to have to be some kind of deal or something. Oh, so the RIAA does exist still, and they sent a threatening letter. This has been ignored for a while. It's apparently been going on for years. I, I didn't even know you could go listen to these recordings on the Internet Archives website. I always wondered how they get away with the whole archiving websites and then republishing those websites, like giving access to things that are behind paywalls. Like, I get it that it happens, like, but how do they get away with it? Do they, do they pay something? I don't know. Internet Archive's reference to the Mutant Music Modernization Act and the required reasonable search to determine that the items are not commercially available demonstrate that the Archive knows it must conduct searches to see if recordings are commercially exploited as a condition to being eligible for the MMA's safe harbor. Let's go back to that then. Is there a safe harbor? Non-commercial use of a sound recording that is not being commercially exploited by or under the authority of a rights owner shall not violate subsection A if the person engaging in the non-commercial use made a good faith inquiry to find the owner of the sound recording, etc., to see if it was being commercially made available. The archive knows it has not met the other conditions for immunity, such as filing a notice of non-commercial use, so they haven't done that either. Some users have questioned the legality of this. Yeah, go figure. And then they get into the harm and the claims for relief. So infringing reproduction. That's a weird way of saying copyright infringement. Infringing public performance. It's just naming the, the Section 106 rights. Contributory infringement is a separate claim, saying that you helped someone commit infringement. Inducement is also a form of helping Vicarious is also a form of helping. Contributory infringement against Kale, against the Foundation, against Blood and GLBP. And, of course, they're going to ask for maximum statutories of 150 grand per work and injunctive relief, and that is onzlaw.com. So, yeah, I don't understand what the Internet Archive is trying to do. I, I mean, okay, so I get that they want these copyrights to be freely available for everyone and that is a noble goal on one hand but that is not the way american copyright law is written and unless they went into this with a plan for when they get the lawsuit i mean it's it's kind of like poking a bear and then everybody wonders like are you ready when that bear finally wakes up and turns around and smacks you like, is he ready for this? I have no idea. I, I, I guess I guess they'd better be. I guess the Internet Archive and Kale better be ready for this. And if they aren't ready for this, then somebody's going to be losing a lot of money. Let me know what you think in the comments below.